Happy New Year everyone. It has been quite a while since I last posted any videos, probably about two months or so, but you know, I uh, was quite busy and then uh, the festive period came and basically I just got lazy, but I'm back with the first video of the year. And right now we are in uh, the middle of summer uh, and you can probably hear in the background there are a lot of cicadas um, you know singing and uh, quite loud at the moment it's been quite hot and quite humid uh, the last few weeks so today I'm going to show you what are the three main plants or vegetables that is growing really really well uh, right now under these conditions so let's take a look at them well, the first vegetable we're going to have a look at is unmistakably the pumpkin, which is just right behind me here. Um, I don't know the exact variety, but I believe it might be the Australian yellow butter. Uh, it's a self-sown plant um, that came up beside the local tree that I have at the back of the garden, which is in a rather shady spot. It might see you know, two to three hours of sun um, at the very most. I didn't pay too much attention to it, but before I knew it, it was climbing everywhere and it climbed up the uh, local tree. And then I have two pieces of fruit right behind here, as you can see, quite big. And these are not the only two pieces. There are at least a dozen uh, of these fruits uh, hanging everywhere on the ground, uh, you know, from above trees and all of that. Um, and as you can see, they are um, uh, quite orange um, so they are ripening uh, quite rapidly but when do I know when I should be picking a pumpkin so let's have a look what are the signs that the fruit is telling us when it's ready to be picked so this is a fairly big piece of fruit as you can see it'll probably be about you know five kilos or so and as you can see the stem is quite thick um, and uh, then we have this little piece here which comes out the other side um, from the stem and it's got the tendrils on it now this is actually what we're looking for this is the signal that tells us whether the pumpkin is ready or not um, so if you look at this bit here it's starting to dry up towards the end here um, and the whole thing will just dry up and once it's actually pretty much dry that means the pumpkin can be harvested you can cut the pumpkin now what you do is that you don't cut it here but cut it right at the top here uh, because you actually then want to leave the pumpkin to cure perhaps for you know at least a couple of weeks before you um, eat it and it will be you know um, just nice for eating by then uh, you always have to cure uh, squash fruits um, that way it's the same as you know when you do uh, potatoes and things like that you you can probably um, just cut them you know harvest them and uh, cook them there's no problem but uh, the taste will be a little bit different and also when you cure them that means the skin itself would uh, harden up and it means that you can actually uh, ha um, can keep that for about two months or maybe more uh, before you eat them so that's the beauty of pumpkins the second plant that I have are these you can see the leaves here and uh, they are unmistakably a legume and what I have here are some really beautiful snake beans very very long um, these are at least I don't know 40 to 50 cm long and there are plenty of them as you can see they are doing so exceptionally well they just love this hot and humid weather and uh, they are also a vine they love to climb and at the moment um, this has tumbled down a little bit because I don't actually have too high um, a trellis for them to climb so what they've done is that they've tried to climb up um, some of the, um, the asparagus um, plant which is actually just behind it and then of course um, that's not strong enough to hold them and they've just tumbled back down but that's actually not a bad thing because they've actually tumbled out of the veggie patch which just makes the beans a lot easier uh, to harvest so this is uh, a fantastic plant to grow and I love vines, I love legumes because they just climb and it means that we make use a lot of the vertical space which would otherwise just not be there. 
Now the third plant of vegetable that I have is right behind me here and it's reaching for the skies. Just have a look at this plant and it is just going up and up and up. Um, this is probably about three meters tall or so and uh, I think it will continue growing because I have another patch uh, where the plants are almost four meters tall. It's incredible. Uh, so what is it? It's the Jerusalem artichoke. Yeah, so uh, not like your uh, artichoke plant, it is uh, part of the sunflower family so that's why the leaves look so familiar and also the flowers are very much like um, a sunflower and very pretty, you know, you can cut them, put in a vase and it becomes like a cut flower. But um, most importantly for us, it's actually the tubers which are below ground. Um, so there are no flower buds yet at the moment. That will come probably in a month or so because um, these plants will start to die down around autumn. Um, so around March, April, maybe even later, depending on how the weather is like, um, the plants will start to die down and then we can harvest the tubers uh, which are just below it. Now these plants are amazing and you know I did not even plan this this year, it came up on its own. Um, so often in the articles that I've read of people who've grown this, they said once you have Jerusalem artichoke in your garden, you're never going to get rid of them. You might think that you have actually harvested everything from the veggie patch or from the ground, but not really, they're always something uh, way below and they'll shoot up when the conditions are right. Um, which actually suits me just fine because it means that, you know, when uh, these are perennial, I, I consider them as perennial um, food, um, they'll just come up every year on their own and that's just perfect. That means I do, I do less work and I still get the harvest. Um, so this is definitely something that um, you should consider um, and they seem to be quite hardy they seem to grow in all sorts of soil condition uh, whether it's actually sandy or loamy uh, didn't seem to make a difference at all in my garden uh, they just shoot up now the most important thing to remember here is uh, not to make the mistake that I've made which is putting them in a raised garden bed so my garden bed is really about 60 cm off the ground and then of course this plant comes up and they are just growing so tall which means that when I finally do have to harvest it it's going to be crazy trying to take down the plant um, but apart from that this is definitely a winner so there you have it that's my top three vegetables uh, for a hot and humid condition uh, in summer. There are also other vegetables that are growing quite well um, under these conditions but those three that I have uh, highlighted are the ones that are really good in terms of yield. Um, so hopefully in the next four to six weeks I'll bring you more vegetables that are growing well in this condition. So I'll see you then.